Good morning and thank you so much for joining us for this wonderful celebration of Women's History Month at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. My name is Anna Tahinci and I am the Professor and Area Coordinator of Arts History at the Glassell School of Art, the art school that belongs to the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. I am here standing in front of a wonderful self-portrait by French artist Suzanne Valadon that I will be highlighting uh, for us today uh, to celebrate the contributions of uh, women artists in art history, but also in history. So, uh, both in history and in art history, we need to know the what and the when to better understand the why and the how. So, virtually in front of any artwork, I encourage my students to apply visual thinking strategies uh, by uh, answering to three uh, questions. What is going on in this artwork? What makes you say that? And what more can we find? And then we can apply a visual analysis equation by uh, uh, further uh, investigating uh, components of an artwork by uh, responding to a visual analysis equation, subject matter plus style plus context plus function give us meaning. So we'll find together uh, the meaning of this uh, fascinating, thought-provoking self-portrait by artist Suzanne Valadon, starting by the subject matter. So this is not an innocent subject matter. This is a self-portrait by a woman artist who was working in Paris in the very bohemian neighborhood of Montmartre. She was a free spirit. She was a strong, independent woman, and she also broke the glass ceiling of her era by uh, being selected to be a member of the highly prestigious Société Nationale des Beaux-Arts, the National Society of Fine Arts um, uh, in France, which was um, a male-dominated uh, society. Uh, so she started early on her career by being a model. Uh, so she started by being the object of um, artworks by other important French artists, such as uh, the Impressionists uh, Renoir or Degas or the post-Impressionist Toulouse. Lautrec. And uh, by being a model, she perfectly understood what it means to represent the human figure, and she became a self-taught artist. And so here she is looking in the mirror. This is a self-portrait of herself, and uh, she is unapologetically and in, with this kind of self-confidence, looking at herself in the mirror while she is painting that self-portrait. And in fact, she is standing right in front of her canvas at the exact same distance where we, as viewers, are standing and engaging with this self-portrait. Portrait. Um, and in terms of style, uh, Suzanne Valadon uh, worked with the Impressionists and also the post-Impressionists, and here she has combined elements from uh, those two uh, very important isms, Impressionism, but also self, uh, post-Impressionism. And she is uh, exploring the here and the now, back then and there, but she is uh, also incorporating some elements that belong to post-Impressionism in this uh, uh, lively, uh, bright application of colors. Look, for example, at how she has combined complementary colors, colors that are opposite uh, the color wheel, namely red and green. And as you know from color theory, when you put red and green next to each other, the red appears even more bright and the green appears even more bright. So uh, she is applying color theory here. She is also unapologetically in this kind of uh, in this kind of honest uh, brutality almost uh, represents uh, herself in her self portrait. Let's now move towards the context because uh, this particular self-portrait was created in this bohemian neighborhood of Montmartre around the turn of the 19th uh, century. So this is a fascinating period of time, uh, an extremely fertile period of time. Uh, Suzanne Valadon makes everything to make ends meet. She has moved from being a model to being an artist in her own uh, right. And so uh, she is uh, uh, exploring 
paying uh, the self, but within a larger context of uh, paying tribute uh, to the contributions uh, of uh, women uh, in art uh, in this male-dominant uh, society. Uh, fascinating also story about this uh, uh, portrait. It was created uh, around her relationship with the music composer Eric Satie, and in fact, Eric Satie uh, was the first owner of this self-portrait. It stayed in his collection until his death in 1925, uh, then changed hands. So it has a very uh, prestigious provenance, uh, collecting history, and uh, uh, ultimately uh, uh, the Becks uh, got to uh, buy it uh, uh, in an auction in Paris in 1966. So it got to join the fabulous collection of um, uh, the John and Audrey Jones Beck uh, at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. Uh, a wonderful also tribute from a woman collector to a woman artist, because as we know, uh, Audrey Jones Beck uh, was a fabulous philanthropist, a wonderful collector in her own uh, right, very often uh, paying tribute to uh, women uh, artists. And then let's ask ourselves about the function of this self-portrait. Uh, when you investigate the function of an artwork, you basically ask the question of the why. Why was it created? Uh, so in this particular case, uh, Suzanne Valadon is looking at herself in the mirror. So uh, this idea of a self-image is extremely important. And even more importantly so, uh, when we realize that uh, uh, she started her career as a model, being the object of um, uh, other uh, artworks, and then of course became uh, the subject in her own right, took her life in her own hands, and uh, like a self free spirit that she was, like a strong independent woman that she uh, was, is offering us um, a self-image uh, to contemplate. So when you add um, uh, subject matter plus style plus context plus function, you come up with meaning. And of course the meaning is basically the summary of your engagement with an artwork. So it is both uh, an intellectual engagement but also an emotional engagement. And ideally uh, there is a combination of both in front of uh, an artwork, always serving almost like a mirror. So you are looking at yourself, asking questions and engaging uh, in this case with this extremely powerful uh, portrait, self-portrait made by Suzanne Valadon. So let's uh, continue uh, to engage uh, with uh, uh, art and let's continue to pay tribute to women in history, but also women artists in art history. Thank you so much for joining us uh, and have a great day. Thank you, thank you.